Durier Yard, formerly Coxton Yard and also sometimes referred to as Pittston Junction or West Pittston Yard, is a railroad yard in the Wyoming Valley region of northeastern Pennsylvania. Durier Yard was established in the early adolescence of railroad history in Pennsylvania by the Lehigh Valley Railroad and operated by that railroad for many decades. Today, it's operated by the Reading and Northern Railroad. The yard lies in the borough of Durier, a bedroom neighborhood of Pittston, itself a secondary community of Wilkes-Barre and Scranton, and as such is part of the Wilkes-Barre-Scranton metropolitan area. Physically, the yard is located on the main branch of the Susquehanna River and in the peninsula formed by the confluence of the Lackawanna. In the yard proper, both northbound main lines are of equal height. Running further northeast, the more northerly track to Mountaintop flies over the more southerly track to Scranton. Both elevations are well below Main Street at the underpass below Coxton Road. Coxton Road leads immediately to some light industry, but then, herded by the Campbell's Ledge, parallels the yard and subsequent northbound main line to Mahoopin. The main Wyoming Valley entrance is through a rail yard wide to the main line, running westbound on both sides of the Susquehanna and eastbound to Mountaintop. Historically, the Y was doubled and connected to a long staging track, but only parts of the doubling remain today. Continuing into the yard from the Y is to cross a bridge that was originally built for four tracks, although today now only contains three tracks. This lead historically contained several crossovers fanning out to various service tracks and buildings within the yard. On the north side, the yard connects to the Lehigh Valley Railroad's northbound main line to Sarah, Pennsylvania. Although the 2017 Reading and Northern System map names Duria Yard as such, in July 2013, a newly hung sign indicated that the Reading and Northern had renamed the Durier Yard as the Muller Yard. Today, some people call it Durier Yard, some people call it Pittston Yard, some call it the Muller Yard as the new sign indicates, but people like me, old school people like me, still call it Coxton Yard. While chartered in 1846, the construction of the Lehigh Valley Railroad was delayed for lack of investment until the early 1850s when the energetic businessman Asa Packer was elected to the Board of Managers. The Lehigh Valley Railroad was conceived with the idea of attempting to break the Lehigh Coal and Navigation Company's monopoly over bulk goods shipping on the Wyoming Valley Lehigh Delaware route, which was dominated by the Lehigh Canal from Whitehaven, Pennsylvania, downriver to Easton, Pennsylvania. The Lehigh Valley Railroad initially connected at Jim Thorpe to the Beaver Meadows Railroad and extended to cross the Delaware just above Easton into Phillipsburg, New Jersey, where it connected to the Morris Canal, the Central Railroad of New Jersey, and two smaller railroads. This gave the valley passenger traffic from Philadelphia and Trenton, New Jersey, and points south from New York City and rail-connected New England communities, along with freight traffic to and from all of the connected partners. Even before expanding northward to reach Wilkes-Barre, the Lehigh Valley had become the trunk line for shipping by rail in the entire Lehigh Valley. Shortly after purchasing the Penn Haven and Whitehaven Railroad, the Lehigh Valley completed its line to Wilkes-Barre in 1868. At that time, all industrial activity was powered in some form by coal, and the Wilkes-Barre-Scranton area was the center of the coal mining industry. The Lehigh Valley and its competitors expanded rapidly, and the valley needed a yard to handle the traffic. That yard was the Durier Yard. Durier Yard was originally constructed in 1870 by the Lehigh Valley Railroad as a turnaround and staging hub for coal transport from the coal region to eastern big city markets. Bulk goods shipping until the 1920s was mainly anthracite coal, the new wonder fuel only made available after 1820, but the Lehigh Canal and railroads that followed also carried timber, lumber, cement, iron ore, stone goods, finished goods, anthracite pig iron, and finished iron work, and later, steel. Owned by the Lehigh Canal and Navigation Company, as it did many of the mines in the southern coal region from Trescal, Pennsylvania, south to Tamaqua, Pennsylvania, thence east along most of the Panther Creek Valley and the Nesquahoning Creek Valley. Durier Yard remained busy during the second half of the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century. Following World War II, large dump trucks began to supplant rail for bulk coal hauling. Furthermore, rail companies began to dieselize to cut costs and remain competitive as the interstate highway system provided a novel form of highly subsidized competition. 
Even though the shift to interstate highways was somewhat delayed in the mountainous eastern Pennsylvania terrain, the shift to diesel was already eliminating much of the Lehigh Valley Railroad's revenues. Ironically, the railroad's steadiest profits came from carrying the cement and steel products necessary to build the interstate highways. The Duryea Rail Yard declined as I-81 finally came to Scranton and airline travel began to compete with railroads on the few products that needed to be shipped faster than by trucks. By the start of the 21st century, Duryea Yard was mostly unused. In late 2009 and early 2010, the Reading and Northern expanded operations due to the emergence of Marcellus Shale natural gas drilling in northeastern Pennsylvania. The railroad spent $100,000 to transform the yard into a sand transloading facility to transfer sand from rail cars to trucks, which is then used by the natural gas well drillers in the Marcellus Shale region. The upgrades to the rail yard included laying new track to accommodate 100 new rail cars and constructing a facility to store and hold up to 800 cars of sand to be used in fracking at Marcellus Shale drilling sites throughout northeastern Pennsylvania. Today, the yard remains a hub for the energy extraction industry, 